Okay, so today we're going to have a little walk around Victoria Docks. Uh, I'm not going to talk much because I don't know if people want to hear the sound of my voice too much. So, uh, yeah, just a little walk around. I might chip in from place to place. Uh, so, as I mentioned, this is Victoria Docks in Dundee. Uh, it's a historic dock and it is listed, which is where you can see the old cobbles are still here and the railings. So I'm just going to have a wander around here. There's a small uh, shopping type area here, but it's mostly restaurants. Uh, you can see the North Car lightship in the distance there. And further away is the frigate Unicorn, which is the oldest British built warship still afloat. And interestingly, still more than 90% of its original timbers. And if you get up and close to it, you can see their original timbers because uh, the outer timbers are not in the best of conditions. Uh, but she's pretty, pretty steeped in Dundee history. So worth a visit if you are in the town. So like I say, a few restaurants just coming up on City Harbour Chinese restaurant. Um, been there a few times, it's just a buffet. Um, Food's good, service is good, I guess. Uh, been a while since I've been in there. There's also the um, Fox something or other water excursion y type stuff going on here. Although they don't appear to be working today, or maybe there's just nobody about. To play. So as I said, tram lines here, Dundee used to have, like a lot of cities, a network of trams. Uh, obviously we don't have the trams anymore, but the rails exist in a lot of places still, uh, and especially the listed areas, you're not supposed to remove them. Oh, so the restaurant there, Porter's Bar and Restaurant, I haven't seen that before. Been a while since I've been down here much. Um, what with lockdown and so forth, there hasn't been much happening around. But with things opening up, it's starting to get a little bit more, a little bit more active. So hopefully, start visiting a few restaurants and so forth. Uh, it's not a bad day today. It was a little bit overcast later earlier. It was a little bit overcast earlier. But the sun is out now. Uh, in the distance there, you can see some oil rigs. Uh, Dundee does do maintenance on our rigs. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Um, but I know we have, we always have a number of oil rigs down at the docks being worked on. And uh, when you get up and close with them, they are pretty, pretty massive. Uh, so I'm just experimenting today. I don't have my long my battery's gonna last but I thought it would be interesting because I was in the town and it's early just to do a little bit of a walk around uh, I don't really know what my channel's gonna do I mostly make Star Trek fan films and potter about with video I'm not super knowledgeable about history or geography or any of that stuff. Uh, likelihood is I might do food reviews and just little walk arounds. Walk arounds in the city and maybe other places. Uh, Scotland is, you know, it's a beautiful country. Uh, and there are plenty of YouTubers that are showing off and talking about history. I just like to walk around and enjoy the scenery. So, you know, maybe Maybe that's just what I'll do. In which case, maybe I should stop talking and just let people enjoy, enjoy the scenery. So many, many years ago, I was a volunteer on the Unicorn. Uh, many years ago and I remember going out on a little float I can't actually remember what the proper name for it is to explore the hull and if you look at the unicorn over there on the starboard side you can see there's some area of decay and so forth uh, uh, about there so we were examining that or at least the plan was to examine that and we got out on this little punt 
and somebody on the dockside was holding the rope. And the guy that was on the boat, on the punt with us said, throw the rope. So the guy threw the end of the rope to him. So we were no longer connected to the dockside. And this was like, you know, an unpowered float. It didn't have oars or a motor or anything. So he just kind of floated out into the middle of the dock. So they had to send a boat to come and rescue us. It was kind of funny. Um, yeah, but I was on, I was a volunteer on the Unicorn for, Unicorn for about six months. It was fun. Uh, I mostly did office work. I did try doing tour guiding, but I'm not, like I say, not the most knowledgeable person. And while I'm interested in history, I am not super interested in history. Uh, and I guess, you know, to my shame, there's a lot of people out there who like to read and study books and history and that kind of thing. Um, I'm a little bit more of a dilettante, so I like to kind of dabble. So I know lots, of, lots and lots of little things about lots and lots of things, but I don't always tend to have a lot of in-depth knowledge. Unless you start talking about Star Trek and then I have lots of in-depth knowledge. But that's because I am an unashamed nerd. However, I do have a massive soft spot for the unicorn. I haven't been on her in a few years now. Uh, I would like to do... I would like to do a tour of her. At the moment, I'm just using the uh, Osmo Action for my walk around today, but if I do a proper tour of the Unicorn, I'll probably go on uh, with the Sony and the gimbal. So like I say, the Unicorn has a long history with Dundee. Um, when she was built in the 1800s, she was put in ordinary, which means basically she was put into storage and she was never masted. Um, after a while, they pulled her out of ordinary, used her as a coal barge, if I remember correctly. And um, there we go, 1824, and then put immediately into ordinary. Um, built at Chatham Dockyards, yes, there's another reminder for me. See, told you, not that knowledgeable. Anyway, actually I didn't know if she was built in Chatham, but you know. Anyway, um, she eventually made her way to Dundee and was used as the base for the Royal Naval Reserve in Dundee. Um, she was briefly renamed during World War II as the HMS Cressy because there was another active HMS Unicorn in the Royal Navy and that caused problems with um, things being and people being misdirected to Dundee instead of the warship that they were supposed to go to so see there's a float that's not the one I was on but it is similar uh, as you can see it's not really built for steering or anything like that or driving uh, anyway that's the unicorn over here is the old graving dock we had more graving docks than this around Dundee this is the surviving one um, Again, this whole dock area is listed, as is the graving dock. It is not in a good state of repair. As you can see, there's uh, machinery falling into the dock over there as the wood's given way. Uh, it really needs some love and care. Um, I do know that there has been talk about dry docking the unicorn in this graving dock at some point over the years. Whether that's ultimately where they'll go with that, I have no idea, but I think that would be a good direction to take it. Um, yeah, now I believe if you look in the distance behind the unicorn over there, you can see the Apex Hotel. And I believe one of the original other graving docks is actually in the car park or underneath the hotel over there, long filled in. Um, yeah, don't ask me how many others there were, I just know about those two. Uh, any history I know about the docks around here come from my time as a volunteer on Unicorn. Don't take it as gospel because, you know, my memory is faulty and I'm getting old and uh, also I don't always pay attention. So yeah, that's terrible. Um, anyway, I love the docks down here. I think it's uh, one of my favorite places in Dundee. I love coming for a walk down here and just seeing what's going on. And especially this time of year when the weather's starting to get nicer and the sun's coming out and you've got blue skies. Okay, there's not a lot of blue sky today. But there is some blue sky and the sun is out. It's just a nice, nice place to visit and walk around and just enjoy the ambience down here. Um, 
it's never too busy, which is also nice. I don't like massive crowds, so uh, this is nice. These houses have been built in the last, I think the last 10, 15 years, these flats have gone up. Uh, a lot of this used to be industrial area and waste ground. Uh, and really the docks have been developed really very well over the last 20 years. Uh, none of those were there when I was a volunteer on Unicorn, which if I'm thinking about it properly, was probably about 25 years ago. Eesh, that's a horrifying thought. Um, well, I did say I was old. <sighs> anyway, I didn't plan to ramble on quite this much, but I guess I have. Um, I hope I'm not putting people to sleep. Maybe I am putting people to sleep. Anyway, I just want to share, um, you know, one of my favorite spots in Dundee, Victoria Docks. It is, it's really nice down here. It's not that so nice if uh, the weather's horrible. But on a day like this, it's not busy. Uh, there's a little bit of sunshine. There's this gentle breeze. It is just really nice down here. It's a good place to get a little sandwich and come and have a sit and a drink and a think about, just to think about life. Uh, you can just see in the distance over there, the River Tay and the Tay Road Bridge. Uh, I think we'll probably have a walk along there one of these days and uh, have a wander down there. Okay, so there's a little, um, got a little bit more of information. You can just kind of freeze on there and have a read. Like you say, Dundee has a long maritime history. I can't remember if I said that already, but Dundee does have a long maritime history. Um, we were a big whaling town for a long time. Um, and one of the streets near me is Baffin Street and South Baffin Street, um, which is named for the Baffin Straits. And that was, I think, on one of the whaling routes. So I, again, don't ask me, I am not an expert. If you want to look that up, feel free to look it up. But the Baffin Straits, I'm pretty sure there was whaling there. I could be wrong. Anyway, that far corner over there where Fox Lake is based, Fox Lake, I remember what they're called now. Um, that is where the RRS Discovery used to be birthed. Now, the Discovery was the ship that Scott took to the Antarctic. Um, she was brought up to the Dundee in either the late 80s or the early 90s. I think it was the late 80s. I'm sure it was the late 80s, actually, because I was, yeah, it was the late 80s. Anyway, she was sold to the trust that owns her now for, I think, the sum of a pound. Uh, I could be wrong on that. That could be utter nonsense. But let's do a tour of the Discovery one of these days, and we shall try and find out some more useful and more accurate facts than any waffling that I can give you. Now here we have the North Car Lightship. Now that netting is new. That netting is definitely new. Um, the North Car Lightship is pretty much what the name suggests. If you look on the top of there, there's what looks like a mini lighthouse. And that's basically what they were. They were it, she was a floating lighthouse. Um, she is currently sitting here awaiting preservation work. And I know there's work underway to try and raise money to preserve her. And I believe there is a trust that's looking after her. She does look like she's in a bit of a sorry state, but actually I think she's, she's got an interesting history and as part of Dundee's maritime history, or in fact, maritime history on the northeast of Scotland, I think she does deserve preservation. Um, there was an incident in her past, I think in the 50s, where she broke through her moorings and light the uh, lifeboat that was sent to pull her back was lost with all hands. Um, they did ultimately recover the ship and her crew, but those who were sent to help her initially died. So, you know, she has quite a quite a rich history and there's some, I, th I think as a memorial to people who have lost their lives, saving her crew, she should be preserved. Um, and any, any display about her really should include a memorial to those people lost. So, like I say, Apex Hotel was just coming up on now. Um, and you'll see more cobbles. I remember another funny story about the unicorn, actually. When I was on the unicorn, I remember um, somebody called up asking if it was the Frygate unicorn. Uh, Frygate, to this day, that amuses me. I don't know why. People mispronounce words all the time. And you can see back in the distance there, Tay Road Bridge again. And we're coming up on Fox Lake and the main entrance. 
Uh, in addition to the trams, Dundee obviously was served by a pretty major rail network in its day. Today we only have one train station, but back then, back in the 50s, 60s and before, we had way more. Um, I think there were at least three in the city centre, one up in Lockheed. Um, I don't know exactly how many, but a lot more than the one we have now. Um, we do still have one in Brotley Ferry, which is only about 10 minutes on the train from here, another in Anvergary, which again isn't that far. Um, but we only have the one main train station. So back in the day, there was a train station down by the docks here, and I'm gonna walk by where that was. Uh, and you can actually still see, still see remnants of that train station. So, battery looks like it's still holding up okay. So yeah, this is Fox Lake. Um, you can come here and do kind of the aqua park or the wakeboarding or paddle boarding and that kind of stuff. Um, not my kind of thing. I'm not a water sports guy. Um, water sports, that sounds wrong in many ways, but you know, I'm not the kind of, I don't like to, I'm not, I can't swim. Well, I can swim, just not very well. Uh, so going out on, yeah, in a dock and getting dunked is not my idea of fun. I'd much rather paddle about in a swimming pool and just have some fun that way, or float about in a swimming pool. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, so yeah, this is the old customs house, which is which is apparently up for sale again. You can see more rails there from the trams. Um, beautiful building. It has been abandoned and decaying for quite some time now. Hopefully, it is going to be sold to, and developed by someone who will give it love and love and attention it needs. Really, really hope that happens. Um, again, it's a long part of Dundee's a big part of Dundee's heritage and our maritime history. So to see that preserved would be really, really nice. So I'm almost done here. I'm not going to go any further or waffle on any longer because, eh. I have spoken enough after saying I wasn't going to talk very much. Uh, it's amazing how much you can end up waffling on when you think you're not going to. So, where are we? Ah yeah, so we're just coming up on where the the old train station was. And I, can't, I think it was Dundee West, but I could be wrong on that. And I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments if anybody actually watches this. So this is the old Arnold Clark. This is the old Arnold Clark, this is the Arnold Clark building. And this is where the old train station down here was. Now, if I cross over this road just very quickly, and I show you, you can actually see the end of the line in amongst all that greenery. We'll see if you can see it. Just there. And over here, Again, one of the rail lines is here. I don't know if you'll see it from there, but there you go. So, I think I'm going to call that a day for now. Uh, I hope this was uh, not too tedious, if you sat through and watched it. But I had fun. It was a nice walk around. I burned a few calories, enjoyed some warm weather. So now I am thinking I'm going to go home and get some lunch. You know, most uh, YouTubers seem to have some amazing sign-off at this point in time. I don't have a sign-off, but um, yeah, I'm going to end the video there. So if you watched it, thanks for watching. Um, like. Give it a like if you want. Don't give it a like if you don't want. Feel free to subscribe. This might be the most boring channel under the sun, but hey, you never know. Maybe you'll see something that will interest you. Uh, bye for now.